episode. We cover digital strategy, marketing, leveraging AI, specifically going balls deep with ChatGPT. I've been in real estate, my God, almost my whole, I was born into it. And so I've been in real estate marketing since 1994 with America Online. We cover a lot of shit. You're gonna enjoy today's episode. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We wanna know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of The Agent Goldmine, where today Shelby and I interview the amazing Jeff Fargo. And if you haven't seen him on Instagram, he's legit. You can find him on Instagram, YouTube, fucking Snapchat. <laughs> we go over a lot of stuff in this episode. We cover digital strategy, marketing, leveraging AI, specifically going balls deep with ChatGPT, his words, not mine. Well, I guess now my words too. And how he's done, he's a full-time podcaster. He's done over 400 episodes in one year and he got to 1 million views in 10 months. We cover a lot of shit. You're going to enjoy today's episode. Gold miners, welcome Jeff Fargo. I've, I've been in real estate, my God, almost my whole, I was born into it. And so I've been in real estate marketing since 1994 with America Online and was a title rep here in Las Vegas for the past 10 years. The greatest thing ever happened to me in September, I was fired, loved it because I have a, I've had a podcast now for about a year that's taken off. And so now my whole world is podcasting and launching my own marketing firm here in town. For that's agents. All I'm doing. Is it for agents yeah, for, or is it for- you know, you know what? It's funny. I'm, I'm, I'm onboarding clients right now that are agents, but I'm talking to a rehab detox center outside of Philly, Bucks County people that I just, I, I, I've been around long enough. I know a bunch of people. I'm no longer painted into a corner with having to work with realtors. Realtors are great. You're all insane, but as long as you're well-medicated or drink or something, it's okay and have balance. And so I now can work with anybody as long as you're an entrepreneur, you know, or looking for just leveraging digital, you know, the, the, the digital power, but also AI. I'm, I'm all in. I'm, I'm balls deep with fucking chat GPT. I'm like, at every day, I'm, I'm, I'm building out systems and processes to help me post better. I want to go deep into that, that chapter of your life where you were fired and starting a new transition. Was a pod, was the podcast even on your mind or did that come completely afterward? Did the, did the firing come out of surprise? Yeah, just talk to us about that mental. Great experience. question. Great question. I'd been podcasting. I started January of last year and... I'm somebody, because of my ADHD, I get hyper-focused on stuff. So I'm just like, oh my God, I got to stay with this. So I started just focusing on the podcast, not stopping by offices, not you know meeting with, with realtors anymore, at least ones that were like brand new or ones that just weren't performing. It just wait, it was wasting my time. And honestly, I'd be wasting theirs too because 90% of them wouldn't do what I told them to do. For the past 10 years, I was screaming in an echo chamber. You know, I, I was the first one in Vegas to do live streaming. I started doing Periscope, which is owned by Twitter. So I, I've live streamed probably 2,000 houses here in town. And I just walk into open houses and see an agent and go, hey, want me to get you 500 people to see your open house right now? What? And would grab my phone and just go ahead and start going all over the place. And next thing you know, three, four, 500 people have jumped on. And so I, I've always been big on video. I have, a, I have a face for radio, but I've been good with video. I'm cool with it. And so for me, getting fired was, I knew it was coming. And again, I, I'm not a God guy, but I'm, I'm a universe guy. And the universe had bigger things in store for me. I've never been happier now at 54 being an entrepreneur. I've never been more scared, but more motivated in my life to help people out. And now, you know, whether it's a hourly strategy call. I'm, I'm not a coach. And everyone these days is a coach. I'm not, that's just not me. For some people, great. For me, I'm an advisor. I advise you on what to do. I'm not going to tell you to do it. We can meet once a, once a month so I could be your accountability partner, but you need to do the work. You're either going to do it yourself. Or you're going to pay for it. Pick one, pick one. And as a realtor these days, if you're not comfortable doing this, like what you guys are doing is amazing. I think it's fucking awesome. If you're not comfortable on video, you know, in a video format, you're dead. 
Costco is hiring. Go be a greeter because real estate's not for you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, when so when you were fired, did you said you're a universe guy? Is that is that calmness, that chill? Was that do you think that's related to psychedelics or did like going back to the psychedelics, how did that play a factor into when you were fired and getting out of that funk? It's a great question. For me, I think it's my age. Just as I've gotten older, it's perspective. And as you get older, you accumulate experiences. And for me, it's being in love for the first time. I've met a girl who is long distance relationship. She's in Tampa. I'm here in Vegas. We're making it work. I've never been adored more in my life than by Brandy McCowan. I fucking love her. And I love my kids. And I have a great relationship with my kids. And everything else is secondary. You know, do I have enough money to put away to retire? No, but I have money put away from my own, you know, just making good choices and doing well. My mom passed away last year, had money come in from the estate. So the universe was telling me, Jeff, go be happy. And happiness isn't always having things. Happiness is being with the right people that love and adore you and experiences. So really, it's the accumulation of those experiences that when I was fired, it wasn't that hard of a blow for me. I, I knew it was coming, Allie. And I just thought, you know what? The universe is telling me right now to double down on being with my girlfriend, being with my kids, and focus on what I really think I'm gifted at. I don't think I know that I'm a fucking assassin when it comes to digital strategy. And I don't give a fuck what people say about me or naughty comments online. I actually have a strategy with uh, ChatGPT to combat that. I'm happy to share it. So I'm at a point, I'm comfortable in my own skin that there's really nothing anybody can do to offend or harm me. I'm, I'm good. And uh, I love that. I love that you have that much confidence. And I feel like sometimes that confidence comes with age, you know, like you, you at a certain point with perspective and knowing what is most important to you and it's not the opinion of others. It's your kids. <laughs> it's your girlfriend with, before we go into leverage and definitely the chat GPT, you mentioned how you were kind of wasting time with some new agents that didn't listen to you. How can an agent best learn from a title company or from a title rep? Ooh, that's a loaded question because most title reps suck. Most, most, most title reps aren't worth the paper they're printed on. And I, I, I said that back when I was a title rep. If a title rep, and the thing is this, you want to qualify I see why you them, were fired. Right? Just kidding. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. It is what value, first of all, are they listening to you? When you're talking to them, are they on their phone? Are they, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. No, no. Ta ta listen to me. Listen to me. A real estate agent wakes up unemployed every single day. You're only as good as your last deal. And so you are stuffing that pipeline as fast as you can, as efficiently as you can every goddamn day. And so if you're going to earn the right to be on my team as my rep, I don't give a shit about your app. I don't give a shit about your net sheet. I don't give a shit about your open house flyers. What can you do to keep me focused on what I love to do, either qualifying buyers and taking them out or, you know, listing appointments? Full stop. That's it. it just most title reps, the good ones, give a shit. They, and there are some out there, but it's, you can count them on one hand. Like, you know, and I'm in Vegas. There's four or five good ones I can think off the top of my head, like really good that care, really care. and. It doesn't matter what company they're with. It doesn't matter the, you know, all that other, all the gingerbread, the fluff. It's do they give a shit? Will they return text messages and phone calls? And also if something goes sideways and every deal somewhere, somehow is going to go, a little bit's going to go sideways. There's just nothing, to me, there's like really nothing is like that evergreen deal. It's, it's, it's rare. Are they going to step in and help? And are they going to not be a company person and go, well, that's just how it is. No, they're going to be like, you know what? Let me look into this off the record. This is what's going on. 
Okay, Jeff, you have mentioned that you are an assassin with digital strategy, and you've also mentioned leveraging AI. You actually, direct quote, are balls deep with ChatGPT. I <laughs> I want to talk all about that because that stra- marketing strategy plus leveraging systems and AI are fascinating topics for our listeners, for ourselves. Tell us what you do. A couple of biggies that I do. First of all, I post literally every day on 12 different channels. You know, right now my podcast, Knock on Wood, between just YouTube and Instagram, I'm over a million views. And that's just, and that's consistency. It's just consistently doing it. What I do is I'll take my shorts that are edited. I have a team of people that do all my stuff for me. And I'll take a short, I'll drop it into a platform called Descript, about 30 bucks a month. And with Descript, it will pull a text transcript of what's being said back and forth. I'll take that text transcript. I have a very long super prompt built in chat GPT that says from the, you know, from what's below, it already has, I've already given it a bio on the person that's speaking on the other side. It knows who I am. That's already put in there. Please create uh, 10 engaging, creative social media headlines, as well as a video description with a hook to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then what I do is I take one of those headlines or a hybrid of a couple of them, and that's my headline that I use wherever I post. And then the video description goes in for YouTube shorts, for SEO, and it's gold. It's absolute gold. Not, every, not everyone's a home run, but um, and anybody can you know check my stuff. You can see that that's the best part of social media. If you know how to look, you could tell if someone's full of shit or not. You could tell if someone's paying for followers on Instagram. Or paying for likes. And I don't. I'm I'm au naturel. How how long is the prompt that you have or uh, like training chat GPT to learn your style, learn who you are? Uh, how long is that before you or before you then plug in and say, okay, help, help me with this one, help me with that one? I I think it's really but the first couple times. A, a big thing that I always do, and this is everybody should be doing this, whenever you're prompting chat GPT, always say, before you give it an inquiry, you want to say, this is what I'd like you to do. What questions do you have for me before you give me your findings? Because remember, if you're a chat GPT 4, you're at like 400 trillion parameters. So you've got to give it definitive info to work off of. And... Like I'm so th- so it's really it comes down to that how you're prompting and very pointed detailed stuff then it can react and go from there. You're always going to be tweaking. Uh, like sometimes it'll refer to me in the um, first person in a description. Nope, always refer to me in the third person in in the video description. It's just little things like that. So you're always tweaking it, Ali. But within the first couple different salvos back and forth, you've got it. It's pretty good. Does 100% of your content on the 12 different channels come from like a single interview on YouTube? Is it like that's your long form and then you chop it into the YouTube shorts and that's where you do all of the Instagram content? Or are you doing content specifically for specific platforms? Great question. I am right now, I take a one hour, give or take, edited podcast. And I have a team of guys out of LA that chop it up and I get seven shorts, one for each day of the week. Industry standard for if you're doing a podcast is you're gonna pull about four to five shorts from you know decent of 30 second shorts-ish, 45 seconds of, a, of content. But I'm at seven to, I can go more than, more than that. I've just gotten good to be a conversationalist like you guys have. So, and so it really comes down to putting it, I put the same content everywhere because Different people are on different platforms at different times. Now, my next, like, I'm at, I'm at Jeff 2.0 now because of, you know, my new thing I'm doing now. But Jeff 3.0, probably by the end of the year, will be literally different. By then, I'll have a whole team of people and I'll pay them to upload to different, you know, different content to different channels. I'll, I'll start beta testing that pretty soon. But for now, I'm doing just fine with same content going out on the same channels. Okay, so 
in essence, your entire social media growth that you've seen, which I have your YouTube open, I have your Instagram open, all of that stems from your podcast interviews. Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Ali the Agent and The Shelby Show. The YouTube, my YouTube growth, 100% podcast interviews. And and my, oh, also with YouTube, what I've done that's really helped. I hired a guy, he's now on my team out of Austin. All he does is thumbnails. That's all this kid does. He's like in his mid twenties. He just designs thumbnails. And if you look on the Fargo Talks YouTube channel and scroll down with the long form videos, you'll see the ones that he started to convert over. And then the ones that I just muddled my way through. And there's a glaring difference. And, but I'm starting to see an increase. If I was to share like my stats, when I hired him about a month ago, the increase in traffic that's coming on, on my YouTube channel. So there, that's 100% Shelby Fargo Talks podcast. On my Instagram channel, that's more, I'd say 85 to 90% podcast content than I've got like genetically superior, adorable kids that belong in like picture frames at Hobby Lobby. Like they're just, my, my son's a redhead with alabaster skin and blue eyes. Come on, come on. Like I get along great with my ex, we're good breeders. Like her and I should be elected in Kentucky out to stud because it's just crazy, <laughs> crazy how cute our kids are. And so I, I celebrate that becomes it becomes a video scrapbook to go back and look like even on Facebook, this happened four years ago. And here's a picture of my daughter and I, or a video. And I start crying and send it on to my daughter and send it to my ex and we all cry. So I tell more of a story about me on Instagram. And I really tell more of a personal story about me, like stuff with my, like more stuff with my girlfriend were together and stuff like that on stories, 24 hour shelf life. You see it cool. You're out. But stories is wonderful because you can see who looks at your stuff. And I oh know God. you're watching. Yes. Love it. And <laughs> if you're somebody that I'm targeting, that you're on my target list of someone that I want to work with to earn the right to work with you. And I see you're you're consuming my content every day. And you're looking at my stories every day. Fucking sure as shit, I'm getting a hold of you. Hey, how you doing? I'm not gonna say to you, hey, I see that you're stalking me and looking at all my shit online. No, it's more, how you been? How are the kids? You know, how how's life? What's going on? How about Texas? Is that crazy or what? Like make a, come up with something and have a commonality with them and let them talk about themselves and don't mention business at all. They always do. They always come back to business. Cause that's why they're watching you. But okay. I have to, cause the reason why I'm asking you this, Jeff, it's very personal. I have, I have, I was off social media. I was off on just Instagram for like a while as I went through this transition period between being like hardcore investor, hardcore agent slash team leader. And then I stopped with production and I stopped with acquisitions. And then I was like, what am I even posting about? I don't know who I am anymore. And now I'm like, no dude, I'm like a podcaster, you know, it's like, we're a part of my identity now, but also still like lead, you know, our, our five pillars nation. And I'm really into a bunch of different events with agents and connecting, whatever. So I've been trying to find out what my natural fit on Instagram is next. And I think you answered it. I think that I should stop trying to come up with all of these like trending reels and doing all of this like extra work when I'm produce, you know, having amazing conversations. Why don't I just take those conversations and put them on freaking Instagram? Is that what I should do, Jeff, my therapist? That's exactly what you should do. That it shall be you hit the nail it's on the head. So much here. easier. I can do it. Yeah. It's, well, it's just, okay. Instagram meta reached out to me about a month ago. They came up in my stream, in my feed on, on Instagram and said, Hey, would you like a free 20 minute coaching call? And I went, what? Like, I, I live in Vegas. Everyone here is full of shit until they prove to you that they're not. I'm like, what's the catch? No catch. It ended up being a 30 minute call about a week and a half ago with my new best friend, Jay, who is an Instagram strategist with Meta. And we had a great talk. And he told me, he said, Jeff, everything you're putting up is great. He gave the suggestion, stop posting twice a day. You're splitting your audience. 
because of my audience size. So I'm now only posting once a day, and I was posting twice. So now I'm down to once a day. And he said, the more real you can be, you're being more relatable. And I've always preached to my clients that you want to educate or, and, or entertain. If you're really good, you're doing both. That you're making them laugh, but also you're teaching them something at the same time. So Damn. don't overthink it, man. You just jump in. Fucking jump in and do it, and you're going to fuck up. You're going to have some posts. You're going to have four views, and you're going to think it's the greatest goddamn piece of content ever because you bared your soul and talked about how you just got your eyebrows threaded or some horse shit you girls do. I don't fucking know. And you're going to look at like six or seven or 20 or 30 people are going to watch it. But then, like, I, I have my, my most watched short on Instagram is it's over 2 million views. I talk about how I don't coddle my kids. And that's the third rail. It's like politics, parenting. You just, you know, whoa. But I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm a great dad. I have a great relationship with my kids. I don't coddle them. I tell them the three words I tell them the most isn't I love you, it's figure it out. And I'm proud of that. I'm not telling you how to parent your kids. I'm just proud of how I parent and I'm sharing my story. And that went viral. And in a second, it went viral. Well, actually not in a second, it was okay for about a week and then it took off. So don't think that just because you post something now, immediately you're gonna get hits on it. It's usually it's not. It's gotta marinate within the, the ecosystem of that platform. Before you mentioned on Instagram, you post things that are important to you. Not so much like, you know, business, it's your family. Are you finding that being that you're also posting some business stuff and there, I mean, there's more to you, obviously more to everyone than just business. How, how does that overlap work? You know, cause I feel like the, the strategy that I normally hear is like stick to one niche, like super niche down and only post about that. Because if you were to go viral on us on a, post of you singing karaoke and you're trying to get clients for, you know, a gym subscription, they're, the two are not going to correlate. What are your thoughts on that? I think that let's, let's look at real estate because your, your audience is basically realtors. I can swing a dead cat in my neighborhood right now and probably hit three real estate agents. Okay. So if you're going to post about just sold, just listed a market update, some award that you probably paid for. I'm out. I'm out. I don't give a flying fuck about it just sold. I don't care. If, if I'm going to trust you, you've earned the right with the most stressful, important financial decision of my life to sell my home. I want to make sure that you know me as a person and that we can connect on a deep, existential level, because not only then have you earned the right to sell my home, you've earned the right for me to tell all my friends about you over and over and over again. That doesn't happen with industry-specific content. I think industry-specific content is horseshit. What's your overall goal with the podcast? Like, where, what, what's the future look like for you? You know, that's, it's a, that's a really good question, because now I'm getting into where I'm getting influencers, big influencers that have either through a mastermind group that I'm in, or we just concentric circles of people that are reaching out. And so I'm getting DMS from people. It's starting to monetize because if you're a good person, you don't have to be in real estate and you don't have to have a massive social media audience. But because of my audience now that I have, if you're in Vegas, I charge an appearance fee and people are paying that to come on my show because there's no better, more organic way to advertise yourself than to be involved in a conversation like we are now. And you then get a one hour edited episode. I post it on my, you know, on, on, on my YouTube channel, but then I add you as a collaborator and or tag you for seven straight days for every single short that goes out. And you get, you know, more, you know, even more exposure that way. So it's, that's, that's also now how it's starting to monetize for me is the appearance fees that I'm starting to charge people. But I'm just getting super cool people that organic audiences. I've gotten burned a couple of times, 
and add some people on that paid for their audience and I didn't know it. Now I know more, you know, especially with Instagram, how, how people are doing it and uh, paying for bots to leave reviews on their Apple podcast page. You know, I, I look at all that stuff now before I, before I have a serious person come on my show that wants to come on, they just have to meet certain criteria. And that's how I'm growing to answer your question. Damn. Okay. Wow. We're doing that shit for free right now. We are sleeping, Shelby. <laughs> At what point did you transition? You know, like you have to, before anybody's going to pay, you know, like you have to be a podcast with substance <laughs> and a track record. What, at what point did you realize that was that you were ready to switch to that model? When I started to get cumulatively, cumulatively across all platforms, over a million views plays a month, that, that's, that's serious numbers. And that's, and that's a million different people, not replays, not my dad in Canandaigua, New York, hitting, you know, refresh and watching it over and over again. Once I hit those numbers, then I knew I, I was onto something. How long did it take you to get there? 10 months. Wow. What, how, what month are we at, Shelby? I think we're like there. We started in May last year. I have oh, to do May. numbers. Oh, so we're what? We're are we like at 10 eight? months. Eight? No, Girl, I don't know. Yeah. Math. We're real like, We cannot math. <laughs> <laughs> we're real we're math is like... <laughs> Listen, the, the, the real estate math is for the is for the LOs and the escrow officers. You don't need to do math. You're fine. You're fine. That, that's for the real estate test. You girls are fine. It's okay. Wow. Go okay. H have you happened to, and we will not be offended, Jeff. Have you happened to take a look at ours? And do you happen to know where our biggest improvement can be? I have not taken a look at yours, but I know exactly what your biggest improvement needs to be already. And it oh, is fine. getting people like how, what we've talked about now, right? How much about real estate have we talked about? Maybe 30%, 35%. Everything yeah, else has been <laughs> different stuff, right? Yeah. And as you, you need to make people as soon as you can, once the pod starts, comfortable enough so it's not a fucking infomercial about how great they are and what they've done and all that. It's who are they as a person? Who are they as a human being? What is it that gets them up in the morning and, and motivates them? And to talk about things like how we talked about, like, are you, are you, are you doing grounding, light work, psychedelics? And then, I, you know, we, we kind of transitioned to family and then social media stuff, because that's my jam. You get someone talking about what they're passionate about, aside from real estate, because most people look at real estate for content online. It's boring as balls. It just doesn't. It, it, it's, it's not sticky content. It's just not. But you get someone to talk and tell their story with passion and vulnerability. As soon as you can make somebody vulnerable, like Shelby, you, you, you were great when you were like, I'm going to ask you something personal. I'm like, oh God, thank you. Please, please. I want you to, my little love. Like that's, that's the meat. That's where people are going to then go, ooh, what's he going to say to that? Right? So what I would do is just vet the people. I don't care if they do a thousand deals a year. I don't give a shit. They're probably robots that have everything set on autopilot. And they're going to talk about them going to the fucking Maldives and how many Lamborghinis they own. Don't care. Don't care. Talk to me about how you're a good parent. Talk to me about, you know, your, where do you travel? And what have you learned from traveling? What are some hacks, you know, for getting into the Delta Sky Lounge? Just like stuff like that. That's what I personally want to know. I find that that most likely, okay, there, there's a difference between being in person and being online, right? Like we have our podcast online. All three of us are in different locations because we're in this era now. You have yours in person where there's just that extra level, you know, of like just being there with that person during the vulnerable moments or, you know, the highs and the lows. Okay, so Wasim, who is my social media, what's the word where they just shit on you all the time? <laughs> Yells at me for all the things I'm not doing. So anyway, he said that virtual podcasts are dying. And that we, if we're, if Allie and I are going to keep doing it, then we should just quit. But we need to fucking sack up and get, get in person, commit. And yeah, what are your thoughts on that? You're nodding. <laughs> I'm, I agree a thousand percent. Like if you guys are ever in Vegas, 
I, I want you on my pod. Absolutely. We'll probably microdose ahead of time. Oh and my God, so, I'm so down. Right? Yes. Oh my God, it was so much fun. <laughs> um, it is, I don't do, like, I'll do stuff like this. If people ask me to come on their pod and it's remote, I'm happy to. But I will never, ever, ever, ever do Fargo Talks where it's a remote podcast. It's just not the same. Even though like we're, we're vibing right now, but it's rare. That's rare to get that through this, through looking at my, at my laptop. And for you guys to be looking at, at a camera, that's tough. To be able to video conference with people, it's cool. Yep, make it happen. But that interpersonal thing, you, you really can then, you're vibing with somebody. It, it's like going out for drinks with somebody. Or, or, or I was raised by Italians. If we don't eat, we don't have like dinner together. I don't get to know you. I don't fucking know who you are. So it, to me, it's, I, we, we got to do this, but I need you like, you know, seven to 10 feet away from me. When, when we first started this out, I, that's where I was like thinking about it too. It's like, hey, we need to break the ice fucking fast. You know, like let's start with a shit show moment. Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. I, that's where I was like thinking about it too. It's like, hey, we need to break the ice fucking fast. You know, like let's start with a shit show moment. And the shit show moment turned into literal shit, like stories Everyone every time. Everyone pooped their hands. Is fine. Every, yeah, I pooped in my hands. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> anyway, Fair Jack. enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you wipes, you Caught know, it like okay. A <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, God. you know what? Then that, that just means you're having a lot of fiber in your diet. Mazel tov. Good for you. Okay. Continue. Allie, keep going. You were saying something. <laughs> so I wonder if we should bring something like that back. You know, I, I don't know. But also it, it's, it's, it's definitely, it, it's difficult, you know, especially with our, with our crew, we are all over the country with, real estate agents, because that's our target, you know, guests, that's our, those are, our, that's our audience. The good ones are all over. I feel like most people come to Vegas, like every Everyone comes to Vegas, year. dude. A yeah. Listen, I was what, just what I there, is... by the way, if I knew you then, oh. I would hit you up. I was there for literally a month ago. <clears throat> we would have gone out for drinks and then, and then, and then done the podcast because we get to know each other. And right. then there's like that. And then we're like, you're my homie. I'm your homie. Let's roll. Right. Totally. Something that, again, here's, here's freebies for you. I'm now, I, I have two personal assistants that help me schedule stuff that just take care of my shit for me. That, and they're both, I'm like, go, go, go. Because I, I, I need to be doing this stuff. So I'm, uh, they're, they're starting to reach out to people that whenever there's a big real estate conference or entrepreneurial related conference coming to Vegas, whoever's speaking, the you know people that are all like 10, 11 speakers, my girls are reaching out to those people to say, hey, Fargo Talks, and then what I do is, if you're a big influencer, I will cover, like I'll do Uber Black, I'll cover, I'll cover your transportation from the hotel. My studio is literally five minutes from the, from the strip. So I'll cover transportation. I have swag made up. I have Fargo Talks hoodies that only go to guests of the show. And I send those out with a little note saying, thanks so much for coming on. There's some Easter eggs here on the hoodie. Feel free to take some pictures and share it. And they share that stuff as content online. So I really take care of my guests. And people don't understand the production value. Like I often get, hey, I'm going to be in Vegas tomorrow. Can I hop on your podcast? What? I'm booked out a month and a half. Plus I go off of the availability of my studio. And no, because it costs me anywhere from $600 to $1,000 per episode in production costs. So Fuck you very much. No. <laughs> pricey. Right? It's, yeah. But it's but if, if you look at the content, it, it is pricey. But if you look at the quality of my edits and what's going out and the 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 audience reach I'm now seeing, just and here's a rule of thumb. If you're putting out everything should be in reels, everything you put on Instagram should be in reels, your reels reach should be industry standard, seven to 10% of your audience. So if you have a thousand followers on Instagram and you post a story, you should, if you have a thousand followers, you should be, you should be getting 70 to a hundred people playing your reel. All right. I go, I, I'm hard on myself. I say 10% and I'm at 19,600. 
which means it should be about you know 1,900 plays and up. And if you look at my stuff now, they're not all there, but a majority of them are at that 1,900 level or way above. And that's that's production value. What's the line that your VAs say when they reach out to these guest speakers or the, yeah, the speakers? Then they're actually, that's great. They're, they're not VAs. They're just girls. And I, I, I crowdsource everything. So I post stuff on Facebook, Instagram. Hey, looking for a personal assistant. Hey, looking for this. And then I get people just send me stuff where people apply. They're both two girls that live here in Las Vegas. And it's part time. I pay them hourly. I just, you know, just 1099 them and just Venmo them you know, when they're done. But for them, I tell them, don't go off a script because you're talking to people that are entrepreneurs that are salespeople. They can feel being sold. Everybody has to buy something. Everyone hates being sold. Everyone has to buy something. Everyone hates being sold. So I tell them, just be you. If you have, if you want to have screenshots of past 30 days of my numbers of views for Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever, Instagram, I can get those to you and, and then just talk to them and go, Hey, I, you know, I work for uh, Jeff Fargo at Fargo talks. He has over a million unique views every single month. He's his studio is five minutes away from your hotel here in Las Vegas. And we'd love to have you on the podcast. And then I, then the only salesy thing is I'll ask them as I'll say, you know, I, and they say, I see you're in town, you know, March 14th through the 17th. There's an opening right now at the studio on the 15th at one o'clock. Does that work for you? Big smile. Big smile. Okay. Do you ask them to, um, like, do you ask them to send it out to everyone in their database or do you just add them as a collaborator and have the highest quality content and then they accept it? I will ask them ahead of time. You, especially now I've got people, I, I had an adult film star on, um, Ashley Fox, nice. She's Alexis, Alexis Fox. And the thing <laughs> is, we went about an hour. We talked maybe 20%, 25% about the adult film industry. She has different lines. She has coffee, her own private label coffee, private label beer. She does a, a comedy show that she produces and is the MC of. It goes all over the country. So she's an entrepreneur. And we really talked about that stuff. She's oh, like 2.3, 2.6 million followers. And if you look at the reels with her, they're... A lot of them are over a hundred for that. I, what I did was I went into chat GPT and I said, I have a guest on my podcast. Her audience is this much. My audience is this much. What is a successful reach for audience for a, a reels post? And it said, anything 80,000 and above is excellent. A hundred thousand is outperforming. And we have, I think there's like 13 or 14 videos. There's a few of them over 300,000 and that's all organic. And I, I asked her ahead of time, what do you prefer, me tagging you or me as you as a collaborator? And she said, as me a collaborator, no problem. So I always ask. Jeff, that is the thing about having a virtual co-hosting situation because it's like we have this like thing beside, behind the scenes where we were taking notes and trying to get our shit together. But there's always a moment where it's like, are you going? Am I going? You know what I mean? We do like a dance. I think that would That's happen great. in person too, though. It yeah, would. True. It absolutely would it, hit you. Th th <laughs> that is that it's 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 your chemistry that for you guys I see you guys having something in person, accent furniture. So it's not like, like mine's at a table where you're like sitting and talking. Yours I'd see more more body language. You're sitting in a chair. You're sitting in a chair with the mic, and the guest is like on a couch or something like that, and you're just vibing. Maybe having a margarita. You know, maybe you just micro dosed or had a gummy and you're just flow, man. You're in that flow state of having a conversation because everyone now is doing a podcast. Not many people can do a podcast. You guys are doing it. I'm doing it. And the thing is, because you keep doing it and you get better at it. Most people do it. They do two or three episodes, shit the bed or shit in their hand, and then they're fucking done. Earlier, you mentioned a, a mastermind that you're a part of. What mastermind is yeah. that? Um, there's a guy who is a, he's an influencer, Sean Kelly, and he has like digital social hour, but Sean Mike Kelly and good guy pays for some of his audience, full disclosure, and which I found out later, but he's an amazing connector and a good guy. So I'm in a WhatsApp mastermind with it's global. It's everybody that's been on his podcast. And so 
Like I have a client right now who's a commercial real estate broker looking to build a major click funnel nationally, looking for investors. I'm talking to two different people on the mastermind that they build out click funnels. So it's like there's people on there right now that are selling ad space for the Super Bowl. What? Like, yeah, it's bananas. So what what I what I always recommended to Anybody, whatever niche you're, and by the way, I, I say niche, not niche, because I'm just not fucking, I'm not that bougie. I'm bougie, but not that bougie. Whatever's your niche, like if you're, if you're a realtor, you want to get into a, a mastermind, not with realtors in your geographic location, because even though they say, oh, I share everything, they're not, fuck you, they're not. Get into a mastermind nationally with people that you really respect them and their game. That's what you want to do. And so same thing with podcasts, like look for people that you just really jive with and be like, hey, can we start just like a little chat on WhatsApp or on, you know, if we all have iPhones and, and here's all of our cell phone numbers. Like I, I've done that in the past with people because I don't give a shit. I just don't care. And so I'm happy to share anything. And I'll always give you honest feedback. I'll never say you suck. I'll say you suck and why with idiosyncratic detail to say, this is what I think you should be doing. And you'll never offend me. He's like, fuck you, Jeff. I tried that last week and it blew up in my face. Okay, but I'd rather tell you than blow smoke up your skirt. That is so brilliant. If you're a listener and you've been on this podcast, I think we should, I think we should do something like that. It's good because we've been interviewing great fucking agents. Why not start a group where it's referral based? Dude, you're a good ass agent. You know what they're about because you listen to their podcast. Or if not, just look them up and see if there's somebody that you want to send your client to. Boom. Like good agent referring to a good agent as opposed to these Facebook groups that are like real estate mastermind and people are just bashing each other. They have the dumbest questions. Like, oh, there's no dumb question, but there are dumb questions. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. Awful. It's crazy. Awful. Yeah. If you do it, I would recommend WhatsApp because it's encrypted and it's for anybody. It doesn't matter if you're an Android or iPhone, iOS user. So I, I, I'm in a couple right now that are great. They're great. And you jump in, if you need something or if you could help somebody out, you do it. And it really is a lot of the people there, not all of them, but a lot of the people there come from a place of karma. Like, I just want to help because I've never made more money in my life than when I just want to help people. It, it, it always comes back one way or another that I, I benefit, whether it's my heart or my wallet or both. How long do you see yourself doing the podcast for? Till I'm dead. Nice. Forever. I love yeah. it. I love, please. I, well, I mean, can you tell, like, I'm, my, my, my kids call it chit chat. And back when I was married, I'm like, kids, chit chat paid to have the fucking pool remodeled. What are you talking about? Because just being in sales, like I'll talk to somebody at the grocery store that's checking me out. I don't care, like checching me out, meaning like my groceries. I, I don't think sure, this gets sure. checked out mm -hmm. that much. My, my I'm sending this like to my your girlfriend, Jeff. Please. Oh, please. She already knows. She, please. She, she signed up for this a while ago. She knows. <laughs> I think that it it really is just, I just, I love this so much, Allie. And like, for me to like do this with you guys, I'm flattered. I'm flattered that you reached out. And Allie, you know where I see you the most is on threads. Oh, no way. You're a I forgot fucking, about, you're a that. fucking, oh, yeah. you, you, you kill it on threads, dude. You are all up in my, in my fucking, in my algorithm on threads all the time, all the time. And as if I always give you a little heart, whenever I see you, I'll give you a little heart, a little heart, a little heart all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because you, know you consistently are on there. I haven't opened threads in three months. I have not opened the app. I should probably open the app. I only opened three. I opened TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. That's cool. That is a power okay. of assistant. It's the, the greatest compliment you can get when you do this kind of stuff video is when someone says you're everywhere. I see you all the time, or you're in my algorithm. <gasps> now you're talking dirty. Like, what? Thank you so I, much. I love that. Right? Yeah. Thanks. And yeah, that's, oh, hell yeah. that's like, so that's the kind of stuff that what, what, but just my, my little routine that I do, I still post all my own stuff. Eventually I'll have somebody do it, but I, I like doing it. I'll take my short, put it through Descript, build all my stuff out. First place is YouTube shorts. And I fill out all this stuff like location, tags. I do all that. I use vidIQ as my plugin. I use that as a guide, not gospel, but as a guide on what to do. And I then go from, I go from YouTube shorts to LinkedIn. I post to LinkedIn. 
And from LinkedIn, I go to my Facebook personal page. I then go to my Facebook and personal page. I do just inline photo of my video. Then I go to my business page on Facebook, the fan page, as Gary Vaynerchuk calls it. I post a reel there. And then I bounce off and I'll go to TikTok. And I go to X, Twitter. Just started doing that about a month ago. Reels and Snapchat. Damn. That it? All yeah, the things. That's it. Yep. And that, oh, and when it. I'm an Insta- when I'm an Instagram, I post a reel and then I share it to my story. And that automatically shares to my Facebook story as well. And I have a separate page for just Fargo Talks. I follow nobody except for me because I'm a narcissist. Ask any girl I've ever dated before Brandy and my ex-wife. And I then, because I'm, I'm beta testing to see if I put nothing up, I don't care about the thumbnail. I don't care about the narrative, no hashtags. Do I get views? And I've got one of my shorts on there has 60,000 uh, plays. Damn. And I share within the, within the Fargo Talks Instagram page, I post that as a reel. And also I post it as a, as a story. Have you found that having a separate Instagram page just for your podcast is beneficial? You know, because I, I feel like it just adds extra work. You know what? That's a great question. Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. You know what? That's a great question. As of right now, no, I I, I wouldn't have done it, but now I'm already in. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep posting through there because it takes an extra 30 seconds to post and get the, you know, to go post a reel and post it to stories. It's getting some traction, but no, I think that you can just go, I, I have my Instagram page. It's a, it's a business page, Jeff.Fargo, but it looks like it's a personal page. So th- that's where I get most of my traction there. Okay, Jeff, what did Shelby. we not hit on today that you think would be a valuable add to, to this conversation before we had to wrap up? I think that I think we cover a lot. We cover almost everything. I mean, the, the biggest thing is this. We went through a lot. It's for anyone that's watching this, and uh, um, there's a 90% chance you're a realtor. You're never too old. I'm 54, and I'm, I, I love this stuff, man. But you've got to embrace it. You've got to love it. And if you think that just sending out mailers and knocking doors and working your SOI is going to grow your business. You might stay at your level. And if you're happy making $70,000 a year, mazel tov, good for you. I'm not, I'm not throwing shade on you, but if you really want to excel, you need to embrace video and you need to embrace AI. And if not, you are a Bugatti Veyron running on four cylinders. Heading to our wrap up questions. Out of all of the apps that you use or any tools, what is your favorite one? And this could be either for business or personal use. I love Descript. It's probably my favorite app that I'm using right now. I was looking at my phone. I'm like, what one do I like the most? I mean, I, I bounce around and test a lot of different apps because I have clients that are asking me, what should I be using? Descript is great because it takes the actual video and turns it into a, a transcript that then you can load that up in the chat GPT and go ham on that. Or as the kids say, it's dope. I say it's dope a lot, but I think that I'm not a kid anymore. I think that the kids are actually probably saying that I don't even, because the other day, my friend who has a 12 year old taught me words like riz for charisma. And there's, there's like four more where I was like, I have no idea what you're saying, but I am so old right now. The song, my, my 14 year old daughter, I, I always fuck it up. I always, I'm fucking terrible at it. But she said like, we had a playlist on during Christmas. And she goes, oh, this song slaps. I'm like, yeah. What? 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 Oh, <laughs> yeah, honey. Oh, yeah. This is. And I said, I go, yeah, this is a, this is slapping, man. And she goes, no, dad, no, no. Slaps. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, dad, you're so That's embarrassing. It. <laughs> She's just, if you want to watch one of the funniest, best episodes of my podcast, I had my daughter on, Alex. And she is just, I'll start crying. Like she is the best. She's all that is good in me is in that kid. And she's smart and she fires back at me and gives me shit. And I'm like, yes, like for me to have, have the say in raising a, a powerful 
female in this world, and I, I'm playing a role in that, is like the best feeling ever. I love it. I love, I saw that episode and I, I really, really liked it. And especially those reels too. Those reels went like, that one was really, I remember you asked her a question and she didn't answer the question. She answered it in her own way. You were like, no, answer the question. She was like, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to answer it this way. So yeah, I, I see what you're talking about. It was so funny. And it's also interesting too, how slang those were like terminology, it comes back. You know, like thread when people were calling clothes like thread, like nice thread, whatever the fuck. Like that's what my dad used to say, you know, like dead ass is coming back. So over time, like, you know, the kids that are just learning Riz, they're it's gonna be brought back when they're grandparents. That's Bless their I hearts. Think. I can't do it. I I can't. My my brain will explode. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> Jeff, I and we normally have a different question, but I have I have like a little curveball in here because as we were heading to our wrap up questions, I was like, do you do wrap ups? Like, what do you think about wrap ups? How do you wrap up a podcast? So that's one of my wrap up questions. I equate my that's a great question. I equate my podcast to like going out for drinks. And if people are sober, OK, have a fucking virgin pina colada. I don't know. But to me, it's like you go out for drinks with somebody. And you talk, 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 you catch up and you're, you know, say funny shit. And, but then it just kind of, oh, it's just kind of, you know, like I'm done. We're done. And I end it. That's it. I, I yeah. So I, I, I don't do any type of, I, I don't do, I, I do always a cold open where Scott, the guy that owns a podcast studio and he's a uh, guy's amazing. He'll be like, we're, you know, we're live. We're already talking. So it's just like, it's the viewers coming into the beginning of the conversation we have the conversation. And then it's like, you know what? Thanks so much for coming on. You know, and I don't do like, where can somebody find you? No one's watching that shit. No one's, no one's doing that. I'd, I'd, I'd rather tag them on everything, on everything um, and do it that way. So yeah, I don't do any kind of wrap up stuff. We just shoot the shit. And when it dies a natural death, like I've had some episodes go two hours because I'm not going to stop. If we're, if we're like really going and there's a, we're, we're jamming, man. Why stop that? That makes sense. And then, you know, if the listeners like it enough, they're just going to follow them anyway. You know, like, oh, wow, who's that person? I need to know their name. I'm going to follow. Like, exactly. I'm that. And, yeah. and that's with, with real estate agents. Don't tell me about the market. Tell me about you. And then if I really connect with you, I'm going to look at your bio and I'm going to follow you or go on your website. And you, it shows on there that you're a realtor because you're compliant. Then, then, yeah, then I'm drawn to you. Being that you live in Vegas, where everyone comes to you. Do you ever go to any other places for events, yeah, conferences? Do you, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's funny. I went before, before I got fired, I went to Tom Ferry. That was super cool. Like I met, I knew people that were there it was my first event. It was really cool. I, I think that down the road, what I'd like to do is travel somewhere where there's like a bunch of really good people to interview and find a good studio or bring my guy with me and get a suite at a hotel and just batch content and just do like half an hour, 45 minute, an hour if it really goes well, segments of, of my of, of Fargo talks and do that. That's definitely something I'm looking to be doing this year. Yep. Okay, Jeff, what, <laughs> what can we and listeners do to help you in your business and where can people find you? For me, it's to help me out. You know what? It's give me feedback on my content, whether you like it or you don't. Give me feedback on what you say, because you know what? We'll, we, we, I'll, I'll, I, I reply to literally 99% of the comments I reply to. It's not my assistant, not anybody else. It's me. And if you slide in my DMs, I'll answer you. It's all good. It is something that just, but give me feedback also. You, you won't offend me. If, if something happened, you can either, you know, you can either post it fine or shoot me a dm hey man when you said this that kind of set me off but now it's a personal thing i don't fucking care we're, we'll disagree to disagree respectfully but if i do something that's factually inaccurate because you've had that experience in a different way absolutely let me know slide in my dms let me know that's a biggie and then to find me i'm just fargo talks on youtube or jeff.fargo on instagram and on tiktok and everywhere else that's it and if you want to follow me, great. If you don't, like, I'm not, I'm not ever like going to be a follow whore. Oh, follow me for clout. I don't give a frog's fuck if you follow me or not. If we get along and you like what I have to say, then tune in, man, because it's not going to stop. This is just me. And I'm going to keep doing it forever. <laughs> I don't give a frog's fuck. I love that. 
<laughs> I've never heard that. Take it. Take it. <laughs> That's awesome. Take it. Yeah. Well, also, I, I love, like, and part of my thing of my firm I'm doing now is, like, I'm mentoring people. You know, it's like for an hour, you know, an hour call a month, and we hop on a Google Meet, and I go through your past content. We go on it together and go. It's, it's like I, I played football in high school and college. And you'd always watch the game after you played a game on Saturday or Sunday. You'd have films on Monday and watch that game. What did I do wrong? What did I do right? Forwards, backwards, the whole thing. Well, I'm now doing that with clients that are putting up video content and I'm offering it now to podcast people as well to say, you know what? Let's hop on a call, go through your your episode in real time and let me give you feedback on, I love this, I love this, I love this. I would do this differently. I did this before and it sucked. This differently, love, love, love. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a treat, a true treat. I love it. This has been a really, really good episode because it's different, you know, and, and everybody loves different. So for listeners, you can find him, Jeff Fargo, on anything, including the Snapchat, which he is bringing back to life. Really <laughs> and, am. If I know. Want, <laughs> and if you want to be a part of our community, if you want to get this type of shit daily, follow us, Shelby Show, The Shelby Show, Ali the Agent, be a part of our community. We'll see you on the next one. Be a bro and share this show. But also, if you don't, I don't give a frog's fuck. That was good. I need, I don't need to say anything. But <laughs> and so That's all I've got. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> oh Thank my you. god. <laughs> I thought she was gonna go. We do we do this a lot. Are you purposely and also, so before Oh be, before you mentioned that Okay, sorry. <laughs> Do you find that having a business or having Insta its own, oh my God, podcast, having your fucking A, I can't even talk. <laughs> Rem, okay, baby. Help me it's out okay, here. baby. We're in this together. Delete this section. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.